What's going on everybody? It's your boy Smitty here. Welcome back to the channel. We are in the middle of LTW's 700R4. And today we're going to discuss uh, changes on the reverse, the low reverse clutch and some things you need to know. All right, we're going to start with this one here. This is the original piston that came out of L to the W's. And look at the seals pretty close. They're square cut seals. Get to focus on my hand here. There you go. They're square cut seals. You got an upper, the middle, and, and the lower. And this one's lower. This little bitty one here. And this piston, they go by part numbers. So if you go changing a bunch of stuff in it, you need to be aware of it. This one's 866 3888, and it's got a dash 15, which just means the production run of that part number. But anyway, um, if you happen to get a core and it's a late model, this is a, an E piston. If you notice the part number on it, it's 868-5550. Um, there are differences on them. Number one, this height right here on this piston is taller. And it's, it has to do with your, um, your low roller support, which is your top plate for your low reverse clutch. If you put these dudes side by side, you can physically see that this land here is thicker than this one here. And you can also tell that there's a there's a big difference. I'm gonna rotate these to wear the same spot. There's a big difference in height, and you can see that here. This height is greater than it is here. Now that coincides with the roller, the low roller support that you put in it. And yes, we do have choline steels and the Rebestus blue friction clutches. It's kind of smeared on there, but that says Rebestus. But anyway, um, so let's put those off to the side. This is the this is the roller support that came out of it. Notice it is a wide support. And if you look at this lip here, which is the, the plate surface, this one's a thick one. These two components go together. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Those go together. This is also a wide style uh, roller which is the updated one, but if you notice on this one, it's got a narrow lip on it. This would go with this style here. Um, and it has to do with clutch plate clearance in the case. Now we're gonna go over how you measure this too. This is an early model that's got a thin roller in it and it's got a thin lip on it. These, you wanna put a uh, the uh, this one here is just one that you really don't want to use in anything. Uh, you might be able to use it in early stock application or maybe behind a V6 or something like that, but don't put it in a V8. It's just not not up to the task. This is the same early model with the updated wide wide roller clutch in it, one way roller. And I got corrected on it, and you know. Even though the clutches perform the same function, they're not all called sprags. And I, I misspoke when I said that, and I got corrected on it. Um, this is a one-way roller clutch. And if you notice the two difference, the differences in the size of the, the roller cages. One, the one on the right is an early model. The one on the left is a late model. The early model, just chuck it. And back to the roller deal, 
a one-way clutch is a one-way clutch is a one-way clutch. However, um, apparently the Sprague is something that Borg Warner came up with and they had a patent on it. And I thank you for the viewer that, that pointed that out and corrected me on it because it needs to be corrected. Um, most everything that we that I deal with today is got some sort of one-way roller clutch in it um, and I gave him an example of well the uh, 60s 70s and 60s 75s use a one-way clutch in it that ratchets and uh, technically enough that's called a a uh, mechanical diode which would make sense because the diode is like a one-way electric, you know, if you get a, a diode in a in a uh, an electrical circuit, it allows current to flow one direction but not the other. Um, a light emitting diode. Um, you can't put those in reverse polarity. You try to put a di uh, LED in reverse polarity, it doesn't light up. So that would make sense. That being said. Uh, they still form the same function, but technically speaking, that's a one-way that's a one-way roller clutch. The Sprag has its own name because of the way the fingers are designed, because it was designed as a figure eight, and that's how they got the the name Sprag. Uh, so, just to clarify that, I don't mind you guys pointing things out to me. I'm not perfect. Uh, I'm just an average Joe just trying to teach you something things I've learned over the years all right so I'm gonna set you up on a tripod uh, because I'm gonna show you how to get this low low clutch set up so here we go all right to get this party started here these are your old these are the old steels that we got out of it we want the wave plate. We're going to use the wave plate for sure. Basically set that down there. Not much to that wave plate anymore though, that's for sure. Alright, set the wave plate there. Um, we're going to grab the... Uh, what I do there they are you basically gonna stack this up stack them up alternate just like it would be in the in the in the uh, case like that and then use your use your top plate just set it in there. All right, we need to find a something equivalent to five pounds. So we got that. We're going to set this off to the side just a second. Because I'm sure we've got enough pieces around here we can come up with a five pound weight. So we're going to grab my shipping scale here. Let's see what one of these one of these housings weigh. Four point six pounds. Man, that's pretty close. Four and a half pounds basically. Let's see what this weighs. Five point six pounds, so it's a little bit too heavy. How about a four L eighty output shaft? Three pounds. That would work too. Let's add a little weight to it. Four point six pounds. See what this overrun planet weighs. Hey, that's close enough. 5.1 pounds. All right. So, get rid of all this other stuff. 
All right, so that's going to be our five pound weight. All right, set our clutch back up here. Put our five pound weight on there. Now we need to measure. I gotta find my caliper. Here we go. We want to measure from this land right here to that surface there, and that's going to be our measurement. All right. So we're going to zero out our little dowel here. And we got 1.21 inches the way we're set up now. And our spec calls for, we're going to measure that one more time just to be, we're going to measure it on the other side. One point two two. One point two one. So basically it's one point two one, which according to this chart overall height of the selective spacer. should be 1.15 to 1.18 inch and we've got 1.21 so it's too tight let's measure it in millimeter just to be on the safe side thirty one point oh seven which is greater than our twenty nine point nine so there's too much it's too tight so let's just take take this thick one out this is why you have to check stuff you guys and gals we'll put a thin one in there let's see what kind of measurement we get twenty nine point six and we're supposed to have twenty nine point two to twenty nine point nine so that that will be that will be the one we're going to have to use. Now see what I was telling you about these two thicknesses. If you look at these two up close, you can see this has got a thin and that's got a thick. Well, this thin one gets us the measurement where we need to go. So that's what we're going to end up using. All right, I'm going to clean up this uh, this support since we're not using the one that I already cleaned up. So I'm going to pull this snap ring out here. Pull the sprat, or excuse me, roller clutch out. And we'll give her a, a quick bath. Compressed air. All right, good to go. And we use our our cleaned up roller. Look at these rollers, real good. I give it a quick bath.
Yeah, look at the other one. I think we're going to use it. Just FYI, all this the sprag or sprag. I keep calling it sprag. It's one-way roller clutch. It will only go in there one way. So if you try to put it in there the wrong way, it's just going to. It's not going to go in. Kind of rotate your as you're turning there, and down in it goes. snap ring back in and there we go that one's good to go all right let's put that piston aside because we're not going to use that one in this one. Let's get our seals and our piston here. Remember, these are these are flat cut seals. So just put them dudes in there. Kind of like that. That looks like the wrong seal. It is the wrong seal. Sure looks like they shorted me a seal. Because I sure don't have it. So luckily I have plenty of spares of these. So we'll put this dude in here. In fact, so we're not going to question. That's the right one. It's got the orange stripe on it. So they just shorted just the the uh, center seal. All right. So now we got our seals in there, it's time to uh, lube up the case and we'll push this piston in there. Alright, let's take and lube up our seals here. And I'm going to say be generous with these, with the, the lube on these, these particular seals because they are a booger to get down in that case since they're square cut. It doesn't help to get, it doesn't hurt to get any down in the, the, uh, in between the seal and the piston itself because it'll just help make sure that seal slides around and doesn't get cut. All right, now do the same thing for your case. Make sure to get 
all three of these surfaces good. All right, something like that. All right, this piston has a notch in it. This opening right here, <clears throat> it goes about five o'clock position because that's where your part ball comes out and, and grabs the the uh, gear. So just put that dude down in there. That was weird. Never had that happen before. There you go. And you, while it's before you put it in there, you can rotate it around, but you'll get to a certain spot where it'll stop. That's where it has to go. And just push. <clears throat> Sometimes you might have to use a little persuasion <clears throat> like now you can use your mouse trap sit down in there and just use the butt of a hammer Kind of like that. And it's in there. All right. Your top spring. And then you put your mouse trap affair back in there. Kind of like that. I might make it a little easier to see. Wardrobe change. I'm getting hot. Put your snap ring down in there before you get too too far away. Tighten this dude down far enough you can expose the snap ring groove. I do believe we're there. So get your snap ring down in there. All right. Man, that dude did not want to go in there. Let's see if I can rotate you around here. It's in there, but it, uh, like I said, it kind of fought me. 
you didn't guys want to sit there and watch me fart with it. I mean, sometimes you run into that. I mean, I mean, no, nothing's perfect. I'm not perfect, and neither is this stuff, so. Um, but like I said, it's in there. So we'll take our mousetrap off. Before we get too far, go in there and check your, make sure your snap ring is all the way seated. And it is. Okay, remember what I said about the about the park pole coming into play. You can see it comes in down there at the bottom. That's what that gap in that piston's for. And you can check that piston. You can air check it by applying air through the valve body. Now, granted, this thing has no clutch in it. So don't get wild with the air pressure. You just want to, if you just want to give it a little bit, and I mean maybe 30 psi, but but you can see it doesn't leak. So that's good. Let me show you where I'm testing that at. Okay, where I'm putting air at is this hole right here. That's your release. That's your, your feed hole right there. And just put your air to it right there. Just give her a little bit of air. Pull it out and it should snap right back down. So you're good to go there. All right, we're going to put this clutch together just so we can, you know, make sure that the travel's okay. All right, if you notice where the, the tang is, all right, you can see the tang right down there. If you line all your others up, now your choline steels won't have that, but if you were putting the factory ones in, they'll have the little tab on the bottom, and you line all your other steels up in the same place. So being as these are aftermarket, just kind of kind of look at your tab. Like this cutout here, looks like it'd go right over that wide tab right down there. And it does just like that. So, you know, remember what I said we were going to do is we're going to dry, dry install these to start with, and then uh, we'll soak everything. That way, we make sure all our clearances are good to go.
Alright. We need our final our uh, upper plate here. Kind of like that. And then this one takes this yellow snap ring. And normally you would put it, the opening down here about five o'clock because there's the anti-clunk spring that goes in there. We're not putting that in just for this purpose. We're gonna test and make sure we got piston clearance and all that good jazz. All right, now, take your air hose again. And you can apply a little more air to it on this one, but it's got good, good sound to it. It's nice and solid. I mean, that's what it should sound like. You can also see the movement on this dude. Okay, if you look right here, you can see that piston right there. So if you apply air to it, See, it's got good movement. That's uh, that's good. I mean, that's that's a good clutch. Shouldn't have any trouble with that one whatsoever. And if you noticed when the air comes out, this little check ball bounces which it should, because that's where it exhausts. See it move? So that's a good clutch. <clears throat> Hi y'all, that's gonna do it for the low reverse setup. Um, now the only thing we'll do is we'll take that, that support back out and we'll pull the clutches out and go ahead and soak them and get it ready for the uh, final assembly. So, um, I wouldn't say final assembly. I think what we'll, what we'll probably do to probably be a little easier way to teach you. Um, we'll go ahead and assemble the low end of the case and take our backlash measurement and make sure it's all hunky-dory and uh, then we'll save the We'll save the other part for the very last. So anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this one. So if you liked what you've seen, make sure hit that like button down there. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, smash that subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell so you get the latest updates when I upload a new video. Um, I sure appreciate you guys st sticking by and watching uh, this build for L to the W. Um, if you got any questions or anything, leave me a comment. I'm usually live on Saturday nights, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, videos I'm trying to post every Sunday at noon Eastern and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, tune in so you don't miss anything. Anyway, that being said, uh, y'all take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless you and God bless America. Bye-bye, y'all. Thank you.